Arthur, I'm hungry, man. Let's go to the restaurant. It's my kumpa. Arthur, we fucked up the grass again, dude. Not looking good. Uh, everybody can take their seats. In this next block of instruction, it's going to be a quick and dirty overview of the seduction community. Uh, as many of you have come to know it before you arrived at our doorstep. <laughs> quick review of what the dollar figures the cottage industry as a whole has been generating over the past decade or so. Uh, what kind of exposure that it's gotten in society at large. And how our approach has pretty much marginalized any hope of the industry maintaining its pole position as the primary source of attraction and seduction training now and uh, in the hereafter. All right, let's get started. First part of this, as I said, we're going to go through a brief history of the seduction community. All right, so where did all this come from, right? Where exactly did the idea of a codified system to attract and seduce women really come from? Okay, well, a lot of people in the industry, when you ask them the question, will uh, they'll cite literary figures like Casanova or Don Juan. Literary figures, yes. Who they, they were supposed to be based on real people. But there's really not a lot of evidence to show that they actually existed. Of course, there had to be figures like them. Uh, but those guys, eh, we don't really know. Uh, that we can't really speak to. And honestly, it's not really relevant to what we're about to talk about. So if, if that's your starting point, great. If not, here's a straight dope. Now, the farthest back that we can trace the community's origins is to the crib notes uh, that were kept by fraternities and other secret societies that really came into prominence in the 1950s. The term pickup itself is probably, as far back as our research shows, uh, coined by the Department of Defense, then referred to as the War Department, in anti-VD and other, you know, newsreels dedicated to the sexual health of GIs during World War II. They didn't have the bandwidth to treat basic STDs, so they, you know, they, they engaged in these media campaigns where they vilified women in the occupied territories in Southeast Asia and uh, in Europe. And you know, when GIs were trying to ploy these girls with like nylons and chocolate, and they really didn't want them, you know, getting burnt. So they invented the term pickup. Now those guys came home from the war, went to college, uh, a lot of them on the GI Bill. And by the 1950s, you see these documents starting to surface in uh, fraternal organizations and secret societies that are dedicated to basically passing on the knowledge that these guys developed when they were trying to pick up these women uh, in foreign places and cultures. Now, these crib notes, as they're referred to, um, were like, Physical, analog, handwritten, or maybe even typewritten notes were passed down from senior members of these organizations down to the junior members and the initiates. And they were basically just detailed descriptions of the methods that their forebears used in their experiential learning process, okay? You know, if it worked for the first guy, he wrote it down and then passed it along to the new guys. You know, it kind of, I guess it kind of gave them like a social edge over the regular chodes that were like, you know, just tooling around campus. Wasn't very scientific or very precise, but at least it was a start, right? So organizations like Skull and Bones at Yale, Delta Cap Epsilon, Franklin Society, etc., 
they would protect this stuff because obviously at the time culture couldn't handle any of it. It you know it would have been total anathema. So that kind of got brought into their their body of uh, of secret knowledge. The key point to understand at this point is that what was happening was they were condensing uh, what they had learned, their personal experiences, and then transmitting it over time from peer group to peer group. Okay, it was like you know the very seedling stages of the hive mind that we have today. Both were members of Spell and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction that he's taking the country. We can do a better job, and I intend to do it. And we'll be watching Be Safe on the Campaign Trail. John Kerry, thanks yes, for joining us. And we'll be right back. Both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> right. Back to the date where it happened, of course, today, which is March 22nd. March being the third month of the year, you get three, you get 222, which is co coded, of course, for Skull and Bones 322. From the heart of East Berlin, a group of middle-aged men ran the Cold War for the East. Their strategy included the standard tools of espionage, but they were also working on a new secret weapon. From the early 1960s until the collapse of communism in 1989, this group spent years designing the perfect man. Their experiments helped create an army of undercover agents who were dispatched to the West. Their task, to seduce lonely West German secretaries and persuade them to hand over government secrets. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. As I am coming up on 10,000 subscribers in this pandemic, seeing all the clownery and the nonsense that exists within our beloved seduction and dating community, I have decided to go on a full out fucking tirade, rampage, and just light up everyone in the industry. And people are always like, you're hating, you're hating, you're a hater. Focus on your own shit. Okay. This industry is dominated by internet marketers, okay, people that made products like Tower of Badass, Pandora's Box, Girlfriend Activation System, full-out scam systems that are marketed extremely well to the point where they're making over $50,000 a day in some cases consistently, okay, have no utility and no help to get you better at this, okay? Then you have other fucking jokers, okay, that are trying to straddle the fence, okay, like Real Social Dynamics, RSD, where they're like, oh no, this isn't just full scam shit, we're actually really trying to help you, okay, but you just need this product and this product and this product and this product. These 30 products, these boot camps, okay, they have uh, people that have branched off, like RSD Max has branched off and now he's teaching people how to master business, okay, a whole load of bullshit, okay, this guy just plays video games all day, and it's just good with social media marketing, okay? You have RSD Derek, who now is this fat fucking old up washed up piece of shit who is rebranded as Derek Moneyberg, okay? Complete fucking criminal past, shade ball piece of shit motherfucker who uses burner phones, 
Okay, he's going to get lit up. Now he's going to teach you how to how to build wealth. And, and on his programs where he doesn't interact with the students who are paying thousands of dollars almost whatsoever, in many cases, uh, not at all, he's just using high pressure sales tactics to upsell them and on Basically, you're all being extremely taken advantage of. Okay, I'm going to carefully go through all the people in the underground. There's almost no one I respect in this industry. For those of you that are not familiar with my content, my original alias was JMulv, J-M-U-L-V. I rebranded as John Anthony to try to become more mainstream accessible. Okay, fuck that. Okay, I like talking raw, down and dirty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I need to get back to the value uh, I do apologize. My past bunch of videos have been, oh, get this Corona thing or get this or get that. Um, I will, I'm going to go through a list of all the people I'm going to be roasting in the, in the coming weeks. The point of the video is there's so many fucking retards in this community. Okay. Let's roll down the list. Okay. And anyone I, I missed, please feel free. These are all people I'm going to, uh, thoroughly attack. Okay. And these, these aren't going to be baseless things. Um, luckily I came into contact with a, a new client who knows the rules. Okay. Cause sometimes when I've attacked other coaches before they've tried to claim copyright or claim, no, your fucking videos and your pictures and, and even you're referring to as your name and shit like that is protected under fair use. Um, and I do have a lawyer on staff for my company that I have directed to handle any of those complaints. Okay. So if you are the subject of, of one of these uh, thorough, entertaining, and useful roasts, okay, that, that need to fucking happen and have needed to happen for a long time because this industry is dominated by fucking charlatans and scam artists and just full-out retard beta losers that suck at this game, okay? Again, for those of you that are not familiar with my content, um, I came onto the scene pretty heavily in 2012. I had my first 100 girls in 2012. At the time of making this, I'm at 1,232 girls. I'm no one. Show me what guy that are that are not lying. Okay, I have over 100 infield pulls on camera. Guys are like, oh, how do we know that you're so? I've been steadily reporting my results since 2012. Okay, when I when I made a big splash in RSD Nation, I instructor assisted for RSD in, in the fall of 2012, mostly with Todd, uh, a little bit with Jeffy. Let's go down this list. Okay. We're going to blast up real social dynamics, some of the biggest fucking offenders of all time. Okay, we'll hit a whole bunch of the coaches, but most notably RST Tyler, RST Julian, RST Max, RST Luke. Okay, otherwise known as fucking massive beta Tyler, outlandish dressing Julian, who married some average fucking bitch. Okay, Max, who became a very good social media marketer, and <clears throat> despite playing video games, all day long in Kiev and being a fucking loser is going to tell you how you can now crush in business. Okay. Just another scam. Then you have fat Luke who's fat as fuck and disgusting. Okay. Based out of Vegas, also a super shade ball, uh, with a criminal past natural lifestyles. Okay. Composed of retard James Marshall and company. James Marshall just recently retired at age 40. Uh, they're charging 15,000 us dollars for a 10 day boot camp. Yes, that's right. 15,000 us dollars. Okay, they only accept cash and wire transfer. Okay, the wire transfer, of course, goes into an offshore bank account in Malaysia, okay, to avoid taxes. A strict no refund policy because we re really value your sign up and we don't want you to take other spots. AKA, <clears throat> our program sucks massive shit as confirmed by multiple insiders. We're gonna blast that wide open. And they're putting 10 people per program. So imagine 10 guys each paying 15 grand US, that's 150K take, okay? It's a 10 day program. Um, and those guys are unable to refund and can only pay with cash or a wire to an offshore account, okay? Yeah, lots of laws are being broken in, with these motherfuckers too. Okay, Squat and Casanova, who had his channel shut down last year when he tried to step up, is doing all, breaking all kinds of both criminal and civil laws, okay? We, we'll address him at some point too. Although he's now restarted his channel, has like 2,000 subscribers, and is trying to re rebuild his scam following again. Mystery and Baxter, okay, while I respect Mystery and while he's one of the, the greatest guys in the game, uh, he is stuck in 2006, has failed to evolve, um, and is associating with a complete fucking beta loser 
who goes by Bexter, okay, Robert Beck, based out of England. We're going to go into the Ultima Man Project, relatively unknown, a bunch of fucking losers in the underground community, okay, Marcus Wolf, Alexander Lindbergh, and David Swift, who used to be with Playing With Fire, <clears throat> who has defected and gone with UMP. We're going to go into the, the these guys pride themselves on amogging and also getting hand tattoos, okay, because that's really cool as well. If you take really high quality pictures with hand tattoos, okay, seal, CL, whatever the fuck, okay, the Asian guy looks like he has Down syndrome. He followed suit and got a hand tattoo as well, and now is running a disgraceful operation called Chen City, which is basically my game, some playing with fire, some UMP stuff mixed in and, and rebranded and repackaged as his own, okay. The 21 convention, okay, made up of whatever that fucking guy's name is. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty funny name, and I, it's not coming to mind right now. But they pride themselves as, oh, we're the, all the alpha leaders. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go into um, these fucking red pill guys. Okay, Rolo Tomasi. We'll explore the manosphere, okay, and all the looks max bullshit propagated by no names like Sonny Arvado from Strength by Sonny. We're going to go into man whore, okay, who's no longer relevant. Uh, who was my roommate in 2013, who assaulted me in a casino and I got him arrested for assault. Uh, I actually am writing my autobiography now too, so that's why a lot of these things are being stirred up from. Simple pickup composed of three beta losers who combined pop culture references with extremely horrendous and abominable uh, cold approach pickup. And, and then later, after attracting millions of followers watching their nonsense, okay, saying Harry Potter and Star Wars words, in cold approach interactions, okay, I don't know what is what is more disgraceful and, and clown-like than that, okay, so it's just, it's, these guys are fucking losers. Uh, they have now moved on to run a business called Jump Cut, and, and Jesse, the Indian one, has now re-ventured back into the, the world of dating, okay, with, with a company called Endless Options, and again, cool, high-quality photos with some tattoos at a pool table, even though it's a fucking loser. And, and Kong, the other Asian loser, banged his girlfriend. Like days of our lives in the pickup world. Uh, Social Prime, comprised of three beta little fucking loser kids named Chris Wilde. Uh, remember the fucking names? Niels and Yolmaz, or whatever. Who gives two shits about that? Okay, I had a whole breakdown of that which I will repost. I reported it for copyright. I, it was not clear to me how to defend those reports. Julian also reported, reported the two attack videos on him. Uh, for any of you that are watching this, I'm sure a lot of you that are on this fucking list will, will get sent uh, a link to this video, or maybe you won't. Either way, I don't give a fuck. But any reports on the channel, I will be following the rules to the T, and any reports on the channel will be <clears throat> fought back by a lawyer on staff. Chen City, we already covered him, fucking Asian retard, ripoff, even messaged him and he was asking me a question, oh, I'm a big fan, it's like, you're a fucking disgrace, you repackage shit, he's like, I know, I suck, blah, 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 blah. Tim Ray, married an average white chick, always was a fucking loser. Uh, Krauser PUA, bald, fucking book writer, profiting, profiting off of uh, book writing in the dating and pickup community based out of England. Terrible at game, fucking joke. Uh, tried to discredit me by saying that all my lays must be from hookers, okay? Uh, because I had mentioned, and other people had mentioned, like Sonny, that I had used Seeking Arrangement as a lead source, which means, therefore, if you're meeting some girls on a sugar daddy site, that you must be paying all of them, okay? That's, that's his inference. <clears throat> also calls me fat, even though I'm in pretty terrific shape. <laughs> especially compared to him. Uh, Evolution Daily, Aaron Alexander, stuck in intermediate purgatory, okay, which means he is not even close to advanced level, yet is giving out information and advice in this community as if he were advanced, okay? Alex Vilenchik mistakenly, <laughs> short-sightedly did an interview with him recently, okay? This guy is a fucking joke as well. Todd V, okay, five years with an extremely average looking chick that he had a kid with all kinds of holes in his game from a technical standpoint okay just had a good marketer named yuri okay that 
that came on board and, and helped him market his videos well and wrote some of his RSD fame, which was originally some of the fame from the book The Game by Neil Strauss. Alex Four Week Natural, who's originally RSD Alex, okay, he was out. Uh, RST so Alex Social at some point or some bullshit. This guy is living out of a van. He has tons of debt. He's a raging alcoholic. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot to be said about him. He has attempted suicide multiple times. Okay, he has clinical depression, all these things. I'm not making fun of, that, of those things. And that is indeed a serious matter. However, he is putting out products on inner game and products on how to be rock solid internally, even though he's taking selfies in a bathtub saying, I feel sad, okay, where, where he's obviously crying in a bathtub like a fucking little chick, okay? These are our role models here, okay? They're either completely full of shit, content farming, their content out to India, okay? Which means the content doesn't matter. They have a good marketing front end. You buy their system. 90% of people won't even fucking watch the digital product that they bought, okay, or in, engage in the coaching because they're lazy as fuck. And they want handouts, okay? And these companies promise you handouts. Girlfriend Activation System says you don't even need to approach anymore. The girls will approach you, okay? And that's going to happen due to some other pop culture reference. The whole mechanism behind their sales pitch is that there's this literatic out there, like Fifty Shades of Grey, and you just need to tap into that, and all of a sudden, pussy will be raining down on your head, okay? I speak realistic truths. I say in 1,232 lays, I close approximately 10% of the phone numbers that I get. If we take a look into my contacts list right now, guys say 10%, that's not very much. You could be doing better. Oh, really? Show me who else has banged over 1,200 girls and tell me what their close rate is. 12,154 contacts on the phone. Okay, let's not exposing any phone numbers here. Oops, there we are. 12,154 contacts. Okay, so it's roughly 10%. Putting this back into focus here. There we go. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, fucking Alex in Four Week Natural. Totally disgraceful. All his employees quit from that company. The attractive man. Oh, and he cried on the plane ride home. He, he's on video. And in these videos, he tried to make them unlisted and private on YouTube. And I have them. And it's fucking hilarious. He said he cried on the way home after RST fired him. Okay. Total fucking loser. The attractive man, Matt Artisan, okay? I was asked by ABC Nightline News back in 2014, when I was living in San Diego, if I would do a piece where they could follow around a boot camp and uh, you know, basically break it all down and put it on national television, okay? I told them to go fuck themselves uh, because I had recently had some feminist smear piece articles in the news and they said that they would get into that kind of material with me, and I'm sure they would have slanted everything negative, and it would have destroyed my reputation even further. Not that I give two shits, but I didn't see the whole bad publicity is, is all, all publicity is good publicity. I don't necessarily agree with that, and I didn't do that. And that was handed off as a second choice to Matt Artisan from The Attractive Man, who has 800,000 followers on Instagram, kind of a frail character, okay, upbeat, but lacking very severely in his technical game. Okay, we're going to get into people who have already been wiped off the face of the community. As I mentioned, Squat and Casanova, who had his channel deleted for breaking multiple criminal and civil laws. As well as uh, Justin Wayne, okay, who was caught by Vice, paying girls to fucking act. Okay, literally was mic'd up, and they caught this and published it in their <laughs> documentary mini-piece. Where he said, if you don't do this and say this, like, I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, now, what I want you guys to do now, make it easier for me. Look around for, for like, maybe two girls or something like that, or one girl laying down. See that woman standing next to him? That's another one of Wayne's supposed girlfriends. Introduced to us as Kelly from Finland. Before leaving for the beach, we'd put a mic on Wayne, and we're rolling when he got into an argument with Kelly. He threatened not to pay her if she did not cooperate. Underneath one kind of apparent exploitation, we found another. Let's just get this shit over because I'm only here for the money. I'm not going to want to pay if it's like, if you embarrass me on camera. 
I can do anything I want. Like, you have to remember, I'm always going to have more weapons and stuff like that, okay? Just don't fuck with me, please, okay? I'm not, I'm going to lose it all. I'm crazy like that. I've always been crazy. That's why I put girls online and, and they, they, for years and no one does anything to me. Listen to me. If you don't trust me, listen to me. 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 I'm telling you in your life. After this, Wayne insisted we interview her. Are you and Justin in a relationship? Yes. How long? Four years. Oh, okay. And do you have a tattoo? Yeah. What is it? Mate. His name. His name? Why'd you get his name tattooed? I love him. Oh, okay. Wayne scolded Kelly for her performance afterward. We repeatedly tried to talk to Kelly alone, but she refused. Or Wayne intervened. Do you get their permission to put them online? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, a lot of times... It's like Jenny, for example, she, I told her and she was like, okay, and, and if, if they don't like, if they don't want to, I just not show anything, you know, simple. She said the video was up for a month before you told her about it. No, she knew that the video would be posted. She just didn't ask me like when it was posted. So that's a clarification. That's not what she told me. And so is everything that happens in the video real? Yes. Did you pay Jenny or Kelly? No. Did you pay them to be on camera when, while we were here? No. You didn't pay either of them? Nope. She would do it for me because I'm good to her as a, you know, as a boyfriend. I heard you say that you wouldn't pay her if she didn't do the interview and make you look good. Oh yeah, I told her to do the interview well, or else I'm not going to be there for her in general. Not pay her, that's not what it, that's not Did what it meant. Did you threaten her? Basically, I was just like, yo, you know, come on, you can do this, you know? She's like, I know, I'm scared. She's like, come on, don't do this, you're making me upset, you know? I was like upset because she seemed, and she also seemed upset about the camp thing. I don't know if I really want to do this. You know, like, you know, like I've done a lot for you. I noticed that like a lot of the girls in your videos are foreign. Why is that? So, you know, it's American girls also, but a lot of them are foreign because, you know, New York and uh, Miami is a lot of foreign girls. Hold on, it's can, just can I, can coincidence? I, can, I, yeah, can I get some water? You know, this is not like, you know, something that, oh, just, 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 just let you guys know. Excuse me? Uh-huh, I'm listening. I prefer just to talk to you about like my teachings. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to create yeah. anything where it's like, too much about like fishiness about me like really mistreating people four days after our interview nice wayne took down all nice his youtube you videos um, all right. a day later he released this cryptic message announcing his retirement kind of for now i'm just kind of like relaxing you know sometimes everyone needs a break completely out of control okay completely 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 out of control okay then we'll go into all the mainstream retards, okay? Coach Corey Wayne, 400,000 followers on YouTube, okay? Clearly is not banging hot chicks, clearly has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Has a book ironically called How to Be a 3% Man, okay? And I make jokes about it, that in order to be 3% of the man that you could be, just follow Coach Corey Wayne. Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne. If you're struggling in your personal or professional life, I'd like to give you both of my best-selling self-help books for free so you can start turning things around right now. My first book, How to Be a 3% Man, will teach you pickup, dating, and relationship secrets to get an ex back, attract your dream lover, or to improve a failing relationship. And then, you know, there's other ones. That, this isn't fully comprehensive. These are the ones that came to mind that I have a lot of stuff to say about. This will, as always, make me uh, more enemies, so on and so forth. Uh, but I could give two shits about that. I could also give two shits about, uh, you know, making this into, into a mainstream popularity channel. Okay, it's going to always maintain the underground elements of telling things how it is, down and dirty, having the best system, etc. Um, but yeah, this, this channel is going to start to jump into a different direction. There will still be lots of value videos. But there will be all these people being fucking torn down in random order uh, as I feel like it. So if you have, <laughs> it's going to be exciting. I, this is the kind of stuff that I live for, if you didn't already know. And they tend to be my most popular videos, okay? I can, I can break down game in its entirety and, and it'll get hardly any views. I can uh, drink a whole bottle of liquor and, and talk shit on RSD Tyler in an Airbnb in, in Portugal. And that gets, I think there's 70,000 views right now. Um, anyways, my name is John Anthony, formerly known as J Wolf. I firmly uh, not only believe, but also have the results to back up by far being leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the industry. The industry is dominated by clowns. People constantly hate on my roast videos saying, keep your eye on your own material. Uh, why, you know, why you got to be a hater? Why, you know, leave the, 
Leave Todd girl alone. She might be ugly, but she probably has a great personality. Yeah, okay. There's plenty of hot girls that have great personalities. So, that being said, I'm hiring another video editor. I'm redoing my intro and outro. I'm getting new fucking cool music put into my shit. There's going to be better production again, more regularity. j Maw is back, 10,000 subscribers and beyond. Let's fucking do this shit. Uh, all you disgraceful coaches in this industry that heard your name on that list, or maybe, maybe you haven't, your name is probably coming up. And that will be a fun time for all. Okay. So, uh, as always, if you have any information about any of these coaches, I already have plenty on all of them. So don't worry about that. If you have any tales you'd like to, to share about your experiences with their products or live programs, email me at johnanthonylifestyle at gmail.com. Keep your eyes open, share the channel with your friends, help keep the magic alive <clears throat> by sharing, liking, and subscribing. And there'll be plenty of reminders in the future videos coming along with that. Thank you very much, everyone. List any other coaches I forgot in the comments, and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care. If you didn't already know, Tyler is an illegal immigrant to the United States. He's locked in the United States. He can't legally travel outside of the United States. And I'm not sure what his tax situation is. Um, but of course, he's stuck there with his uh, Mexican partner and their two, their two kids, which will be American citizens. RSD is without a manager, without a coordinator, and without accountability. So there's Tyler, who's a part owner. Nick, who's the, the other co-owner, who's not talented, but has the money. So together, they work apart, it doesn't. Because Tyler doesn't have financial stability in the United States, um, and if he leaves the United States, he's in big trouble. Nick has a lot of financial stability, but no talent to kind of earn on his own. There's no customer service, there's no HR department, there's no uh, staff care. Because Tyler doesn't have financial stability in the United States, um, and if he leaves the United States, he's in big trouble. The popular dating forum RST Nation was shut down a few weeks ago by the company Real Social Dynamics, otherwise known as RSD, and the fans, customers, and viewers have not been given an explanation why. This left the community puzzled, but a few people, including myself, luckily, were able to connect the dots. Now this is just the very beginning of the RSD meltdown, okay, so make sure you press subscribe below to be informed of all the new updates of what's happening in this saga as this company unravels, okay? It's not clear how long this video will be up for because RSD has tended to shut down these kinds of videos in the past, okay? So make sure you press subscribe to be updated about all future things that are happening with this situation. You might be asking yourself, why should you listen to me when it comes to these matters and why should you give a shit about what I have to say? I am an ex Real Social Dynamics employee. I worked for the company in 2012 and I know a lot of people who still work for the company and who happen to know a lot of inside things. So the Reddit post reads as follows. Not a whole lot of solid details out right now, but there's no way ICE wasn't involved with this. For those out of the loop, disgruntled former RSD employee Alex revealed that Owen Cook and the mother of his kids have overstayed their visa while staying in America. No surprise there. I've been saying that for years, including in some past videos. If Tyler or his baby mama ever left the United States, there is no way they are ever getting back in. Their kids, on the other hand, have three citizenships. One of Tyler's kids has autism and has a shit ton of therapists and medical professionals he works with, all in LA. The federal government has been cracking down on cases of overstayed visas as of lately. Despite what may be the popular notion, they are cracking down on everyone, not just Hispanic immigrants. Rumors started circulating in the Los Angeles and Las Vegas sites that Tyler is taking a trip to Canada. Unless he's taking a fucking sailboat over there, there's no way he's coming back. Now here's an explanation to why the forums might have been shut down. He writes, Employees started trying to discuss the situation on the RSD forums about two weeks ago. In response, they shut down the forums. This is a big deal. Even in the height of the Julian Blanc, Owen Cook sexual assault and rape scandal, 
they didn't shut down the forum. If the rumors weren't true, I doubt they would shut down the whole freaking forum. Tyler is definitely not in LA and hasn't been there in over a month. If this is what I think it is, this will be the worst thing to happen to RSD. The sexual assault and rape scandals will eventually be forgotten, but US immigrant enforcement never forgets. Unless there's some immigration thing I don't know about, this is very tragic for Owen. He's not going to be anywhere as effective in his work when he's in Canada. Also, he's going to have to deal with so much. His baby mama is a Mexican immigrant, so she may not be able to go to Canada. In no way the kids are going to Mexico, they've never been there. This is a lot to deal with, and it will be a very long time before Owen can get back to work. Very tragic situation all around, if it is what I think it is. So you might be asking yourself at this point, why the fuck am I wearing this stupid shirt with Tyler's face on it? Okay? <laughs> I will show you. It's because Tyler gets approached a couple times a day, even when he's not dressed well. Um, I get approached a couple times a day, even when I'm not dressed well. Now when he is dressed well, he's just beating him off with a stick. <laughs> So Tyler took a big trip to Canada, most likely because the immigration office, ICE, okay, the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement, closed in on his overstayed visas. Okay, so he likely will not be returning to the United States anytime soon. Now to those of you who have followed me for a while, you know I do Muay Thai kickboxing, which is the best stand-up style for punching, elbowing, kicking, and kneeing. Okay? So the co-founder of Real Social Dynamics, okay, along with Tyler Durden, is Nicholas Ko, otherwise known from the famous book The Game, as RST Papa. Okay, he's been training in some amateur MMA Muay Thai kickboxing. So as you can see, these <laughs> two co-founders are a true set of power packing <laughs> alpha males. A uh, very good example for all the impressionable young men that they lead around the country. But I would actually enjoy a formal sparring match <laughs> with Papa in the sport of Muay Thai with pads, of course, and gloves. That could be a fun event for all. Now, Papa happens to be multi talented. Okay, his other all star trait is his ability to rap hip hop lyrics. Let's take a look. I am like a social senator that get rapport, take over like we've been at war. Step two, you get a team. Bill Cruz splitting the seams, living the dream. Game plan, you're just getting the scheme. Just imagine the deals that we can get in between. Looks like the next Lil Wayne to me. Lil Papa. Lil Papa has been posting some tweets recently, tweeting about the new president that he's hired for Real Social Dynamics. And notice that this president was hired right around the time that Owen went missing to Canada. Tyler that is, Tyler Durden went missing to Canada, and also the time that the forums were shut down, okay, that they are now offline for maintenance. Okay, now a new president is hired for RSD. Now let's take a look. Who is that president? This is the man, Rene Rodriguez, that may be replacing Owen Cook, aka RSD Tyler, as the president of Real Social Dynamics. I'd also like to point out as a side note that both Rene Rodriguez and Nick Coe, despite having tens of thousands of Twitter followers, have zero activity on their daily tweets, meaning no likes, no comments, no shares. Hmm. Now I personally am 100% against Mr. Rodriguez taking over the presidency because I think Owen, aka Tyler Durden, is downright fucking hilarious. Hello, I am from Bengali. Korma. Stupid shit be gone! Ah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey! 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 Whee! Woo! Hello! I. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right, you're an accident. You're an accident. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know what is wrong with me. Nashville's. Let's go back to Nashville. No, no. Nashville. I don't understand why you don't want to go back. I'm getting so frustrated in the game and I'm getting so downtrodden and pathetic. Why you gotta say that shit? You said to be yourself. Oh, ah! oh my God. Stop making fun of me. <laughs> that about wraps up today's news. I hope this was very informative. Make sure you subscribe below to follow all the wonderful developments in this story. And if you're looking for pickup and seduction content with no bullshit behind it in this world full of bullshit, please subscribe below for six new videos a week. Until then, I am John Anthony and I get approached zero times a day, even when I am dressed well. Have a great one. The Game by Neil Strauss, read by Dexter Fletcher. The house was a disaster. Doors were split and smashed off their hinges. Walls were dented in the shape of fists, phones, and flower pots. Herbal was hiding in a hotel room scared for his life, and Mystery was collapsed on the living room carpet crying. He'd been crying for two days straight. This wasn't a normal kind of crying. Mystery was out of control. For a week, he'd been vacillating between periods of extreme anger and jags of fitful, cathartic sobbing. Now, he was threatening to kill himself. There were five of us living in the house. Herbal, Mystery, Papa, Playboy, and me. Boys and men came from every corner of the globe to shake our hands, take photos with us, learn from us, be us. They called me Style. It was a name I had earned. We never used our real names, only our aliases. Even our mansion had a nickname. It was Project Hollywood, and Project Hollywood was in a shambles. The sofas and dozens of pillows lining the floor of the sunken living room were fetid and discolored with the sweat of men and the juices of women. The white carpet had gone gray from the constant traffic of young, perfumed humanity herded in off Sunset Boulevard every night. A mistress rampage during the last few days had left the rest of the place totaled and the residents petrified. He was six foot five and hysterical. I can't tell you what this feels like, he choked out. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it will not be rational. He reached up and punched the stained red upholstery of the sofa as the siren wail of his despondency grew louder filling the room with the sound of a grown male who has lost every characteristic that separates man from infant, from animal. He wore a gold silk robe that was several sizes too small. The ends of the sash just barely met to form a knot, and the curtains of the robe hung half a foot apart, revealing a pale, hairless chest, and below it, saggy gray Calvin Klein boxer shorts. The only other item of clothing on his trembling body was a winter cap pulled tight over his skull. It was June in Los Angeles. This living thing, it's so pointless. He turned and looked at me through wet, red eyes. There was no one else in the house. I would have to deal with this. I couldn't let Mystery die on my watch. He was more than just a friend. He was a mentor. He changed my life. I needed to get him Valium, Xanax, Vicodin, anything. I grabbed my phone book and scanned the pages for people most likely to have pills. People like guys in rock bands, women who just had plastic surgery, former child actors. But everyone I called wasn't home, didn't have any drugs, or claimed not to have any drugs because they didn't want to share. There was only one person left to call, the woman who had triggered Mistress Downward Spiral. She was a party girl. She must have something. Katia, a petite Russian blonde with a Smurfette voice and the energy of a Pomeranian puppy, was at the front door in ten minutes with a Xanax and a worried look on her face. Do not come in, I warned her. He'll probably kill you. I gave Mystery the pill and waited until the sobs slowed to a sniffle. Then I helped him into a pair of black boots, jeans, and a gray T-shirt. He was docile now like a big baby. I'm taking you to get some help. 
I walked him outside to my old rusty Corvette and stuffed him into the tiny front seat. I want to learn martial arts, he said. So when I want to kill someone, I can do something about it. I stepped on the accelerator. Our destination was the Hollywood Mental Health Center. It was an ugly slab of concrete surrounded day and night by homeless men who screamed at lampposts, transvestites who lived out of shopping carts, and other remained human beings. Mystery, I realized, was one of them. He just happened to have charisma and talent. I signed him in and we waited for a turn with one of the counselors. An hour passed. He began to fidget. Two hours passed. His brow furrowed. His face clouded. Three hours passed. The tears started. Four hours passed. He bolted out of his chair and ran out through the front door of the building. I chased him across the street and caught him outside a mini mall. I took his arm and turned him around, baby talking him back into the waiting room. Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty. He was up and out again. I ran after him. Two social workers stood uselessly in the lobby. Stop him, I yelled. We can't, one of them said. He's left the premises. I ran out of the door and dragged him back again. The social workers led him down a long, dark hallway and into a claustrophobic cubicle. The therapist sat behind a desk, running a finger through a black tangle in her hair. She was a slim Asian woman with dark red lipstick and a pinstripe pantsuit. So, how are you feeling today? She asked, forcing a smile. I'm feeling like there's no point to anything. Mystery burst into tears. I'm listening, she said. I can't go on, Mystery went on. She reached into a drawer, pulled out a small packet of tissues, and handed it to him. As Mystery reached for the package, he looked up and met her eyes for the first time. A flicker of animation flashed across Mistress' face, then died. I know exactly what to say on what to do to make you attracted to me. Every rule, every step, every word, I just can't do it right now. She nodded mechanically. Another place, another time, and I would have made you mine. Yes, she said. I'm sure you would have. She didn't know. How could she? But this sobbing giant was the greatest pickup artist in the world. That was not a matter of opinion, but fact. There was only one person alive who could possibly compete with him, and that man was sitting in front of her also. From a formless lump of nerd... Mystery had molded me into a superstar. Together, we had pulled off spectacular pickups before the disbelieving eyes of our disciples in Los Angeles, New York, Melbourne, Belgrade, and beyond. And now, we were in a madhouse. I am far from attractive. My nose is too large and has a bump in the ridge. Though I'm not bald, to say that my hair is thinning would be an understatement. My eyes are small, though they do have a lively glimmer, which is doomed to remain my secret because no one can see it behind my glasses. Three minutes. This is it. Ground zero. Would you like to say a few words to mark the occasion? Hi, I'm Johnny with Vigilante Intelligence. Today, we're going to get into Fight Club's 9-11 predictive programming. Fight Club was produced by Arnon Milshan, who is an admitted Israeli spy. Fight Club was released in 1999, two years before the attack. Milshan also produced The Medusa Touch in 1978, featuring this 23 years before the attack. Milshan wasn't the only Israeli spy who had foreknowledge of 9 11. In 1980, journalist Mike Evans had dinner with Issa Harrell, the former head of Mossad, and asked him if he thought terror would ever come to America. Harrell responded, Yes, I fear it will come, 
I believe the first terror attack will be New York City's tallest building. He said that 21 years before the attack, and what stood between New York City's tallest buildings was the World Trade Center sphere created by German artist Fritz Koning. Kill two birds with one stone. Destroy a piece of corporate art. Operation Not Take Thunder, go. In Fight Club and on 9-11, it was destroyed by terrorists. Hello. I need you to arrest me. They left behind them a trail of abandoned and betrayed women who had no idea their lovers were actually spies. Those were actually the best years of my life. I was 32, you know. I could have lived, I could have had a life, and I didn't. Known as Romeos, they were experts in the art of pretending to love. What problems do men have in deceiving women? Not too many. You know, it's, you do it once or twice or three times, and then you are pretty cold about the whole thing. Peacocking. All right, for those of you familiar, it's dressing up in a ridiculous outfit, okay, or wearing a ridiculous feather boa or goggles or some extremely strange piece of attire.